My favorite thing of the day, barbecue. <laughs> you were staring longingly into this grill, so come on over. Everyone's <laughs> sure to be firing up the grill this 4th of July. We've got a truly special treat for you. U.S. Wellness Meats is here to share their secrets for the perfect barbecue. We're joined this morning by John Woods, the founder of U.S. Wellness Meats, and Keith Armstrong. He's the executive chef of the Greenwich Country Club. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. The How grill are you? is looking good this morning. The crew and the troops are hungry. John, tell us why grass-fed beef is the best choice for people this 4th of July. Well, first of all, I want to say happy birthday, uh, America, and all of our ancestors can see grass-fed beef for eons, and we're back at it again. Our animals eat right, so you can too, in a brief nutshell. And what does make grass-fed beef so special? Grass-fed beef is going to be 30% leaner than conventional beef. Grass-fed beef is very high in omega-3s, lower in omega-6s than conventional product. And overall, it's a much healthier, healthier meat. And it's an affordable choice on this 4th of July. Keith, tell us how to make the perfect American burger. This one is different than the ones you've seen cooked out there, I assure you. Tell us why. Well, you're going to start off with a beautiful grass-fed product. And then we're going to take and we're going to add a different dimension to it. We're going to add a little braised pork belly to it. It's been pulled with a little barbecue sauce, a little roasted onion, and a really important thing is to allow the burger to rest before you begin to eat it, and always season your grill grates before you cook it. Now, why are you seasoning the grate? I know everyone seasons the burger, but why season the grate and with what? Well, uh, seasoning the grate is very similar to seasoning a, seasoning a cast iron pan like your grandmother would have with okay. cornbread. Uh, you season the grate with a little salt, a little corn oil, and you're basically trying to prepare the grate for grilling the product. And afterwards, seven or eight minutes, you're going to let a burger sit. Is that going to cool it off? I mean, the people will say, I don't want to eat a cold burger, I still want to eat it hot. I totally understand. Uh, it will it will cool down slightly, but it'll still be plenty hot to eat. Uh, the sirloins you want to allow to rest probably approximately about 10 minutes. Because you let the juices kind of settle. The juices are going to repose back into the meat. All right, show us down here, if you can, guys, the pork loin that you're going to throw on this burger. It's basically a, a pulled pork, in a sense, and the it's, onions as well you're throwing on there? It's a pulled pork belly, and then the onions have been roasted on the grill uh, with a little thyme, a little garlic, and olive oil. This is good stuff, and we've got the finished product right over here, a little slaw on top. We've got eight burgers. We're going to feed some of the troops and their families this morning. Me, guys, I've been eating meat for like five days. I gained five pounds since Thursday, so I'm like Novak Djokovic who won Wimbledon. Just give me some grass. <laughs> so I'm going to be eating the asparagus down here. Back inside to you guys. What's coming up? Yeah, I don't think there's a salad anywhere in sight this morning. Yeah, cry me a river. I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for you, Dave.